Greetings, comrades, and welcome to the Ragging Podcast. I'm Pescador, and in this episode of the podcast, I talk to It's Yosh. We discuss his transition from Twitch to Mixer, what he truly enjoys about the platform, and the future for Twitch. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Chento Fury. That's right, you guessed it, Chento Fury. They are the lifestyle. They are the fashion brand. And you can find it all at ChentoFury.com. That is C-E-N-T-O-F-I-O-R-I.com. Their shirts are extremely comfortable. So buy yourself one and do yourself a favor. Also, the Reggae Game Podcast is part of Big Heads Media. With that said... Let's get on to the podcast. Guys, this is the Red Gaming Podcast featuring Pescador and it's Yosh because Jim She isn't here. <laughs> I absolutely love the, uh, I still love the intro. <laughs> No, but I I did notice that you made a switch over to Mixer. I like it. I like the new the new style that you have. I like the new push for the new uh, platform. Please explain to me why you chose that platform. Um, well, Mixer has always interested me for like maybe like the past year. I've always like looked at it. I've had friends that actually moved over there and really enjoy it over there. And it's always, like I said, it's always piqued my interest. And I think um, with the recent events happening with Twitch and also with like Ninja moving there, I think Ninja opened the door for, you know, more creators to move into Mixer and even bring in more viewers, of course, um, into Mixer. And I think that's a good thing that's happening because I feel like Twitch definitely needs that competition. Absolutely. I mean... I know we, like I said, I forgot to press the record button. So we were talking about, yeah. we were talking about actually how, I guess a whole bunch of terrible things with discipline in Twitch has been happening in the last couple of months. Yeah, like lack of lack of discipline, lack of proper moderation, like not moderation, moderating, like you know improper moderating of the site yeah you know you had that thing that happened with ninja recently where porn porn was literally the number one game being streamed on uh, i think Fortnite. i think it was like one of the top channels had like over fourteen thousand viewers yeah and that stream went on for two plus hours yeah and no one saw it you can't tell me you can't tell me that you don't have a moderation staff or can't afford a moderation stuff. Come on, they're owned by Amazon. You yeah. can't tell me that you can't have a proper moderation staff looking at your number one game in your directory and making sure that all streams are okay. But I mean, that kind of goes goes without saying, though. I mean, it seems like Twitch has really dropped the ball, like you said, in the last couple of months. I mean, I mean, there are people yeah. that have caused, like, have actually done. A- terrible amount of things against the uh, TOS. And yeah, I mean, you had, I mean, and it's not just female streamers, you know. I mean, people want to blame it them being female. I don't believe that at all. It's just their top money makers. You know, like you look at Doc Dr. Disrespect. Yeah. I like Dr. Disrespect as a creator, don't get me wrong, but he literally broke the law by recording in a public bathroom. Yeah. And he, he was got only like two weeks, right? For like a week to two weeks. Yeah. You know, anybody else would have done that. It would have either been a permanent ban or a 30 day ban. So what you're basically saying is that you believe it not to be with gender, but you believe it to be the status in which the streamer is like uh, yeah. the higher the status of the streamer, the uh, less likely they'll be banned from the platform. Yeah. And especially now, like what is Twitch going to do now? Oh, like, yeah. No. Like if, if like they're like, OK, well, this streamer did this. This is a 30 day ban. What if that streamer goes, okay, well, I'll just go to Mixer. Yeah. Or, okay, I'll just start streaming on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Twitch does not want to lose that revenue. Not anymore. 
Yeah. I mean, there, I understand, I understand there's a, there's a business aspect, you know, like there is a business aspect. You have these people generating revenue, bringing in money. But the thing is, it's kind of like with Twitch being a live streaming platform, you're more focused. You should be more focused on the content that you put out there. So do you want more of a positive content, like positive content and people actually following the rules and you being known as a platform that that actually follows those rules and do what you need to do? Or is it are you going to be the platform that lets lets some people slide and other people like get punished? Yeah, but does it reflect on Amazon as a whole? Is the I question. think it does. Oh, because uh, if you think about it, they uh, from what I've read, articles that I've read. They just churn and burn their employees. I've read many articles in which they just like, they do like 60 plus hours. Um, The turnover rate um, for working for Amazon is outrageous. Uh, And then they've had many lawsuits against them for misconduct in the workplace. Mm -hmm. All the high ranking offers like CEOs. Well, yeah. And you had so many like, um, who did, who did that um, late night show where he went into the, um, he went into the warehouses and saw the working conditions. Oh, oh, um, was it on Netflix too? Though, uh, like, I could have sworn, been, it's, sworn it's, that there was like a, a thing on Netflix, a series that they actually did that he used as well. To do, he oh. used to do the Comedy Central. Um, I can't believe I can't remember his name. No, I'm trying to think, but I honestly can't. I, I can't think of it either. Let me let, let's Google it real quick. Amazon. <laughs> oh. But you're saying that like the working conditions of the warehouse were just awful or like, yeah. the, the way that they treated them in general. I know that I read something that they were trying to implement video games inside the warehouse to kind of take them away from that monotonous uh, grind that they had to do. Um, but to me, honestly, I don't know if that's enough to compensate for that. But I'm just saying it seems like oh, yeah. Twitch only – oh, not Twitch. Amazon seems to just really care about the money aspect of their business and not so much – I guess the effects of the uh, misconduct. Yeah. I mean, you're right. I, just, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, it's a business, you know, and I'm oh, not absolutely. Gonna, I mean, and they're the number one business pretty much in the world. So it's kind of like hard to be like, as long as people are giving them money for the convenience, they're always going to be there. You know, what I'm really Wait, interested to see though, is the fact that like, Say if one big streamer, I'm talking like Dr. Disrespect, Tim the Tap Man, um, you know, anyone of the, that caliber does something terribly wrong, like what's going to happen? Are they actually going to ban them? Because uh, in fear of them like leaving the platform completely in general or them just switching to the yeah, mixer? I mean, it'll be like a slap on the wrist. They'll be like, okay, well, besides you getting a 30 day ban, we're going to give you a uh, seven day ban or a uh 24 hour ban or even you know? maybe they might even slide it under the rug and just be like you know what we'll ban you for a little while just to make ourselves look good but we'll pay you money to keep you off just for the time being to keep you happy and keep you on twitch but oh yeah i wouldn't doubt it i wouldn't doubt that at all i don't know it's 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 kind of leaves that whole gray area and I, I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens because like you said the last couple of months it seems like a lot of people have been breaking TOS and nothing has really happened. Yeah. And and don't get me wrong. I love Twitch as a platform. Like yeah. I've met some of my best friends who I, I would consider best friends in real life on Twitch. And I've met a lot of amazing people and experienced a lot of great content. You know, going to TwitchCon was probably just one of the biggest highlights of my life because it was just such a great, great experience you know and i want to see them do better and i want to see them you know get out of this rut you know but for me it's kind of like okay but right now do i want to represent a platform that is not properly following their own rules yeah and- you know and with mixer is like i, I already like I, I witnessed it and I can see it is that their staff is very involved yeah, and they are willing to listen to their, their community and they will take care of, they will take care of trolls that just come in and say racist shit in your chat and they will actually ban the accounts for that. That's awesome. 
you know, and it's kind of like with, with and so they're trying to provide a safe space and a safe environment for all their streamers, which is fantastic. So have, yeah. So if you have a whole bunch of trolls that are going and saying sexist, racist, all these things, all you got to do is report them, tell them what they're doing and Mixer will hand actually handle those accounts and ban them. That's, you know, that's when you do yeah. things like that with Twitch, how long are you going to have to wait? Ah, oh, forever. A week, two weeks, a month yeah. for something to actually happen. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's one thing Twitch really needs to get down packed. If they're if like, because we could have another MySpace Facebook situation for all you know. You know, I you remember when MySpace was the biggest thing around and then Facebook just came and just wiped myspace out well yeah because they have a better they have a better setup and I, I don't disagree i see what you're saying here and it makes perfect sense i mean yeah Mixer can just do that you're absolutely right they can I, I, and twitter twitch is putting them in a situation putting themselves in a situation where something like that could possibly happen now, i'm not saying it's going to happen immediately or anything like that twitch is definitely still way too big to crumble like that but if it keeps on happening and if they keep letting this stuff slide, you'll see more and more streamers moving to Mixer. And the more streamers you see moving to Mixer, the more viewers you see moving to Mixer. Yeah. But Ninja already has like what? Uh, 100,000, I think, or something like that. Over 100,000? 100,000 what? Followers in Mixer like the, that made the switch. Um, I don't even remember how much he has, but... It, I, actually, I think that was within the first like first like yeah that day had to be so. within the first day. I think he has well over a million. Yeah, oh, he has one point six million right now. Already on Mixer? That's that's amazing. On okay, see, yeah, okay. Well, that was probably the <laughs> the first day of streaming. That's my. And my the awesome thing with him too is is that when he's been so he's been streaming on Mixer, every single time he finishes a stream, he hosts somebody. He hosts a small streamer, or he hosts somebody. Like the guy he's hosting right now, uh, I'm I'm watching it right now. The guy has like over five thousand viewers now, and yeah. now he has like forty six thousand followers. That's insane. That's crazy. Is it because like, that they actually monitor like like Microsoft as a whole? Their company actually cares and monitors the streamers themselves, and if they are, you know kind of uh, breaking any rules or violating anything they actually will ban him is that is that why that he's not afraid to do that or is it is, uh, i'm i'm still learning about mixer because I, wait I what do you else. mean so what um mean? so what i'm asking is i'm saying like is this is this someone he knows personally because i know no, it's the person that he's hosted the, uh, he's been hosting randoms like just random people playing fortnite yeah. on mixer so what i'm saying yeah. is is it because like, he does he does this because that they monitor their, their streamers very well, and he's not afraid to do that now because he's on Maybe this platform? Maybe so. Maybe so, because, you know, sometimes you don't want to send your, like, Ninja especially. I'm pretty sure he was scared to host a lot of people because if you host somebody, your whole chat's going in there, and you don't know how many oh, toxic people you have in that chat. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, most likely, maybe, you know, maybe the Twitch staff is so involved that if he hosts somebody, he he doesn't mind because he knows that Twitch staff will be able to take care of it, you know, yeah. or something like that. No, it makes, it makes sense. But um, I know a lot of people, I'm not, I'm not saying a lot of people, but some people don't know a lot about Mixer. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie, I was one of those uh, individuals. I knew some me things too. about Mixers. Uh, yeah, Mixer. me too. But um, I did not like do my heavy research. Like I, I, I sh checked it out a few times because I knew a few people that switched over. Like I knew about the hype zone and things like that, which I actually kind of like the multi-streaming. Um, yeah, the co-streaming. The co-streaming yeah, yeah. is actually for. So the co-streaming is actually different than Twitch's um, squad streaming. So with Twitch's squad streaming, only partners can do it, of course, and they can only yeah. do it with other partners. Yeah. Um. So, and their chats are still separated. So when you do squad streaming with, uh, with Mixer, when you do co-streaming with Mixer, you share the chat. So, um, so like say I'm stream, I'm co-streaming with you and you have your own chat going on. So like, let's say, all right. So usually when we stream, like, let's say usually when we stream, like, let's say if we streamed on Twitch together, 
we'd have our own chat and everything like that. So we'd have to mute our microphones to talk to chat. Yeah. So that way we don't, you know, be rude to the other person's community, you know, while talking to ours. Well, Mixer cuts that off and they combine both streamers chats while they're streaming. So it doesn't matter if your mic is on or not while you're streaming because y'all are able to freely talk to the chat because y'all both see the same thing. I I think that's an awesome idea. And and the reason being is because say that, you know, you wanted to like, say I'm, I'm a lower level streamer than you. Obviously it's the case. Mm -hmm. Um, I get on mixer. Uh Yeah. (laughs) I get on mixer. I'm new to the platform. I don't have any followers basically. But like we've been playing games for a long time together. You trust me. We do a co-stream yeah. together. We can interact and chat. Your chat can actually get a feel of who I am as a streamer and as a person. And they can follow you. Yeah. And yeah. also they can converse with you so they don't miss a beat with you. They're with their, yeah. fa- like their favorite streamer, but they're also checking out another streamer. Exactly. So which makes me feel like Mixer is more focused on their content creators and that community feel. Yeah. They don't want their content creators to feel like they're always against one another. They want their content to creators to be like, hey, you're a content creator too. Cool. Let's be a family. Let's be friends. Yeah. And let's grow, like actually grow like together, you know? And I hate that. I hate that phrase. I hate that phrase, let's grow together. Yeah. Because it's had so much negativity on the Twitter aspect. But it's kind of like Mixer it does that and actually means it. And you don't see too it's many like, platforms do that anymore. I mean, they just yeah. kind of like, you're your own content creator. Um, they're not saying that it's a competition, but the way they set it up, it makes it kind of like you focus on just yourself and that's it. Don't worry about anything else. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because like when I first moved, when I first went to the platform, I've had so many people reach out to me and they were mixer partners uh, they were people who've been streaming on the platform for two years. People have been streaming on the platform for three years since it was Beam and stuff like that. Welcoming me, stopping by my chat, actually talking with me, not no hi and bye or exclamation point lurk in my chat or anything like that. It's actually been people coming in, wanting to see how I am as a content creator and wanting to talk with me and get to know me. And I haven't experienced that in Twitch in a long time. Like, they're, they're, to be honest, like having content create other content creators actually want to come into my chat and talk with me and get to know me. Well, why is that, you think? Like, why is it not found in Twitch but found in Mixer? Is it because so, of that family kind of uh, feel so, that Mixer offers? So I feel like, so with Mixer, Mixer doesn't focus as much on numbers as Twitch does. So like, let's say if, let's say if I wanted to apply for partnership with Mixer, okay? So let's say if I wanted to apply, the minimum requirements is I need to have at least 2000 followers, stream at least 12 days per month and stream at least 24, five hours per month. That's it. That's all I need. That's the list. That's the list for becoming a partner with Mixer. That's so and you look at and you look at Twitch is you have to have it's the same some of the same things you know have yeah. to stream so long and do all this but you have to average that 75 viewer yeah. that dreaded 70 and even then I mean even when you have an engaging chat sometimes they still so, deny you yeah and and even so yeah I had plenty of friends that had 100 plus average viewers and their chat was always active yeah and they still got denied. And um, so it's kind of like so it's so with Twitch having that numbers game, it's kind of like, OK, so if I interact with this person a lot and if I host them and raid them a lot, my community might like them more, want to hang out with them more. So I might lose my numbers. Yeah. And and if I lose my numbers, then that's me further away from being a partner or something like that, you know? And I'm not saying everybody is like that, but in the back of your head, it's always there. It's kind of like, you know, I'm averaging like, cause I went from averaging like 50 plus people to averaging like 20 plus people. So I know how it feels to have your numbers fall, but it, it and, and I never would want it to get to me, but sometimes it did. Of course. And, um, 
And that's that's the kind of the thing, you know, like I streamed on Twitch for so long and then I just started seeing myself becoming unhappy. And that's never the place that I wanted to be streaming because I feel like I I because I love streaming and I love talking with my community. I love interacting with people. So my first like two or three, my first three streams on Mixer that I did, I did a whole trial week of streaming on Mixer. I did three days. I'm like, OK, I'm going to see how these streams go. And if they go the way I think they're going to go, I'm going to make the move. Let me tell you. So the first three streams were fucking insane. I've had so much support from the partner people that I've started talk like that I've talked to on Twitter. I've had so much support from just new community members yeah. and everything. It like blew me out the water. I, I streamed for nine hours one night and I had two people there the entire time talking with me. Jeez. Literally the entire stream. They didn't leave for like two or three hours and then come back and talk a little bit. They were conversing and talking with me the entire time I streamed. And that's, and that's impressive. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of, I guess, viewership. And I, I did notice this um, when I hopped in Mixer. It seems like there's a lot more people that want to engage in chat in Mixer. And, and this is not a, a podcast to really bash Twitch by all means. Oh, no. No, no. I Like I said, I love Twitch as a platform. Twitch has done so many great things. Just because of their slip ups they've been making this past year does not negate all of the good things and great things they have done for the entertainment and social world. Absolutely like, not. But it's the it's the sheer fact that it's time for them to really change their platform for the better. It seems exactly. that they've been lacking in some areas and and just as of recently, it's really shown like these specific areas need improvement. You need to do something. Otherwise, you're going to start losing your streamers, your viewers. And it kind of already has shown. And I, I would really like to see some mm -hmm. of the numbers. I mean, I haven't really looked at this statistically where Twitcher, uh, Twi Twitcher, my goodness, I'm combining both of them, Twitch and Mixer sit now compared to where they were like a couple months yeah. ago. But well, I'm assuming I mean, it's better for I Mixer. I feel like Twitch still definitely has the majority. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like they're, they're definitely going to have the majority of viewers and streamers of course um i think it i think it's safe to say like there's a honeymoon period right now since like like i said ninja just moved to the platform at the beginning of august and we're not even halfway through august yet yeah so we we'll see we'll see probably within the next two or three months how well this transition happens and and how well it's going to work out but i mean i hope I hope it brings in more people to the point to where it's an actual big competitor. I want a Pepsi versus Coke situation. Yeah. You know, cause right now it's, uh, it, I mean, I'm not knocking mixer here, but it's kind of like the, the, the local brand versus Coke at the moment, you know, like it, it's not, it's not as close as it, as people think it is or want it to be. But it will get there. Like Mixer is a much younger platform than Twitch, yeah. So you just have to give the, these kind of things time, yeah. you know. Especially if you think of Microsoft in general as a company. I mean, they're starting to implement what the their streaming, uh, their game streaming service coming soon, you know. And, and that the Metro Project mm -hmm. Scarlet and how all that stuff kind of ties into and it makes content creation on those platforms so much easier or at least anticipated to be easier oh, yeah. on Mixer. So, I mean, with like all I, that, it's going to be really easy to str like stream on Mixer. Yeah, like as a console player, I rather you know, of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I rather Nintendo than Sony because I feel like they offer more. But with what Microsoft is doing right now, is very smart in the long run of things, in the grand scheme of things, because they're connecting like everything together to be this social space or and and mixers a part of that you know and yeah and so and you have the cross play with like pc and xbox and and all this stuff like that so i feel like they're trying to merge their pc crowd and their console crowd into one yeah 
So we'll see. Like I said, we'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, I feel like the next year is going to be big for Mixer if they play their cards right. I mean, they already dealt they already dealt a great hand. Oh yeah, with Ninja. You know. Yeah, and it, it's weird to think that like, and I'm going to use a metaphor here, and it's going to be really really strange. So stick with me here, but oh, I, I, I view I view Twitch as this dad figure, and this dad figure is supposed to be the quote unquote cool dad. So he's just like, you broke some rules. That's fine. It's not a big deal, you know. Just, just mm-hmm. you know, it's okay. But like, Mixer is this like dad that keeps by the rules, but like he, you know, he's gonna be a good dad kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, for a fact that like it's always gonna be there. It's gonna do good for its kids. It's a terrible analogy, and I'm so sorry. But yeah. but I mean, they. Like you said, they did a great job of creating this safe place for for content creators and viewers. I think it's phenomenal. I mean, just coming at it basically out of nowhere and and pulling that deal was a really smart move. And what they have already set up is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm excited to see what it has to offer in the future just because I feel like they're... I'll use another analogy that the turtle in the hair, like they're kind of like the turtle just coming up slowly but surely. And they're going to eventually overtake the hair if they, they, you know, if the hair falls asleep kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's a good analogy for everything. You know, if you don't stay on your toes, that, that, that was, that was the whole turtle in the hair analogy (laughs) is that the hair feels like it's so far ahead that it doesn't need to take itself seriously. Correct. Yeah. And that cockiness, that cockiness is its downfall because yeah. the turtle, the turtle is going at a pace and he's going and going and going. And the hair is just like, all right, well, let me chill for a bit, you know, or something like that. <laughs> but at that yeah. moment that you chill and you stop, you know, sticking to your morals and doing what made you such a unique thing is when you just fall. Yeah. So, yeah. Good analogy there. Oh, thanks. When we started explaining, I felt like Billy Madison trying to. Um, do you remember that? Do you remember Billy Madison growing up? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, my. I think. I don't know if that's my oh, favorite Adam Sandler movie. Oh uh, yeah, but it's one of mine. Oh, when I was talking about, it, I was like thinking about the puppy who lost his way, and I don't know why I thought about that story. And I was like, you kind of hesitated there at the beginning when I was doing the dad analogy. And I swear to God, I thought you were going to say something more or less on the lines of like, I award you no points and God have mercy on your soul kind of thing at the very end when like, he's just like, that was just, that was just stupid of you to say that. But, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I was following along with you. Don't worry. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad. But after you've done your switch, um, given the fact that you've been doing this trial run, um, do you ever find yourself or do you think you'll find yourself going back to Twitch? I never, I don't know right now, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't say no and I can't say yes, you know, at the moment, but currently I love Mixer. I love the community that I've garnered already there and I, and I want to see what's more in store with this platform. So at the moment I'm sticking with Mixer. I think it's a safe bet to be honest. Just yeah, because, uh, I made the full switch. Like, I did my trial run that week, and then I was like, okay, it's a it was a hard decision. Like, my anxiety was through the roof. I cried about it. Like, <sighs> Twitch, like no, Twitch is like very serious. Like, I spent the yeah. past two years on this on Twitch, building my community, building myself up as a streamer, finding who I am as a streamer. And, and, you know, I was taking, I'm taking a big risk moving over to Mixer. Yeah. And that goes to show that how serious, um, this platform is. I mean, it's a contender. It really is. It is. And I wish, I just wish more people had eyes on it and would actually experience it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like so many people are so quick to judge. And I feel like the people who are mostly judging never actually went on the platform and tried it out. Yeah. You know, every, everybody has a Microsoft account. Everybody runs windows on their computer. Yeah. All you got to do is go to mixer.com, sign in with your Microsoft account and go and experience it and see how it is. 
That's literally all you have to do. And and, and the basic setup is very similar to Twitch. Yeah. But I mean, like, just a little differences and a little... I mean, it's different. It's the same, but it's different. Yeah. You know, like, when I started streaming, like, everybody's like, oh, this is complicated, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, it's it's Twitch, but different. Like, it's still... Like, it's... You're still live streaming, you know? It's not rocket science. Like, I'm sure making the about me brought me back to, like, my MySpace days because it uses, like, that <laughs> HTML encoding and you yeah. have to, like, put your images on there. Then all you remember... play the music on the, in your about page. That's what I remember about <laughs> that, MySpace. Right? Man, that's a long, long time ago. But it's just like, it's just like, it's, it's, it is, it is such a different platform and it's offer, it offers so much. And I feel like people are, people are sell like, I used to always be the type of person that's like, you got to stay on one platform. You got to establish yourself on one platform, you know? And then like, of course, like making YouTube videos is not the same as live streaming, you know? Like, so it's yeah. kind of like, okay, you can branch out, do your YouTube branch out, do your, your social media stuff, but you have to stay on Twitch. That's the only way to grow your brand. Yeah. That's, that's how I've always saw things, no. but like trying out mixer, it's it was an eye opener yeah in a sense like it's kind of like okay maybe i shouldn't have judged all these people that made moves to mixer or youtube or d live or facebook or whatever you know maybe they experience what i experienced trying out a different platform yeah it's funny that you decided say to that. take that full plunge i honestly you know what I'm saying? yeah i honestly i I kind of judged Mixer when it first came out. I'm just like, this is just, yeah. you know, Microsoft's poor, t- a poor attempt of making, you know, their own version of Twitch to make their own money. And yeah. I just thought it was like, uh, you know, the the average Joe's gym, I guess, uh, you know, of, of yeah. what, what's out there. So I was just like, you know what? Why would I waste my time on some some small potatoes when I can be on the main course? You know, wh- why why would I do that? Yeah, but, exactly. But now, I mean, it's starting. I'm starting to see the tables turn, and I kind of do. I do like the switch. I mean, I I really do hope that Mixer can reach the same level as Twitch, or people will see it as on the same level as Twitch, because mm-hmm. once that happens, Twitch will need to change a ton of things about the platform in general to even compete. And that's what I'm. The, that's what I'm waiting for. Like I said, the one thing Twitch really needs to focus on is proper moderation of terms of service on their platform. Yes. If they can't get that down packed, then that's going to be a problem for them in the long run. Because streamers have, streamers actually have their concerns and everything like that listened to on another platform. Yeah. You email Mixer support, they're going to contact you within the next day or two. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's yeah. like, and Twitch, like I said, with Twitch, it takes what, a week, two weeks. Some partners I know, they, they email partner support and it still takes a week. It still takes like forever for them to get back to them. Yeah. So it's kind of like, what are you doing? Like, I understand you're a huge platform. I understand that there's way more channels streaming on there and there's way more viewer base on there. But there should not be a point to where moderation is lacking. Like I said, porn streamed in the Fortnite directory for two plus hours. Yeah. That's unacceptable. I just can't believe that Twitch couldn't even see that or, or, uh, or find exactly. that, that fast. I mean, it just blows my mind. And, and it's unacceptable. Yeah, to me, that is one thing that is completely unacceptable. And even the CEO came out and made a tweet and he said it was unacceptable. You know, he took... he. T- but the thing is, is that nobody nobody follows Twitch's CEO's Twitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Twitch, the actual Twitch, the actual Twitch Twitter account should have issued a public apology. It, and that's it's really funny you mention that. And I I'm, I'm not even kidding when I say this. This is an honest uh, story that I'm about to tell you. So my fiance started on Twitter. She mm. actually was posting about streaming. She wants to start streaming. And she's a little nervous to do so, uh, and rightfully yeah, so. It's your first time it's, doing it's so. It's a very nerve-wracking yeah. thing to do, so, especially if you just start and you don't know where to go, yeah, you know? Yeah, and she put a, a post out there saying that, you know, um, I don't, I want to 
find a something more or less on the like non battle royale type game, what would somebody recommend? And the weirdest thing is Microsoft, uh, the store answered back to her and, and gave her some recommendations. You know, and she mm-hmm. she engaged in a conversation with Microsoft. They actually ended up um, giving her like twenty five dollars to the store, and this was just recently. Just I think it was just today. Wow! And I'm not yeah. even kidding when I say I, that. I, I have a post. Microsoft's been on point because yeah. I made a post about switching to Mixer, and the actual Microsoft Store account commented and said, "Welcome to Mixer." And that's the thing. I'm glad to have you on board. You just made an amazing point when you said that Twitch didn't even like the actual Twitter, the official Twitter. Uh, of Twitch did not even say anything about oh, yeah. that well, or issued apologies. The official Twitch accounts don't do anything. If you at Twitch support, you get nothing. Yeah. Like if you if you literally mention Twitch support in any post, they're not going to respond. And if you mention Twitch in anything, you're not going to get a response. I mean, yet again, it kind of reflects poorly on 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 Twitch. Yeah. I mean, it does and it's sad. Like I said, because I love the platform. I love Twitch as a platform. And just to see them dropping these things that can be so simply fixed is heartbreaking in a sense. Because, that, like I said, that's a platform I've been on for two years. Yeah. It's kind of like, and it's just crazy, man. It's it just crazy. seems like like Microsoft, they really want that number one spot. And they are really oh, putting they're all riding the effort. The wave. They're riding the they're, they're riding this wave. But they're not gonna be they're not gonna be dicks about it and say like oh Twitch is fucking up blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna be they're gonna pull this nice guy tactic and they're gonna pull this tactic that that hey. will make Mixer feel more appealing than Twitch. And it's about time that someone um, makes you feel at home. You know, does yeah. something nice to, or go the extra mile to actually make you feel welcome. Because, <laughs> like you said, I've never seen Twitch really make any any attempt to reach out to individuals or even issue an apology. Like you said, like it, it's sad to say that, but it's, it's the truth. Yeah. And like, even like, I think somebody said something. Um, I think, uh, I don't know if you know who seriously Clara is. She's pretty big on, on Twitter. She made a post not too long ago talking about Twitch, not doing certain things. And then Twitch responded saying, make sure you hold us accountable. Like the actual account said, hold us accountable. I'm like, okay, well, how are we supposed to hold you accountable if you don't even respond to any of our concerns? Yeah, and and without mentioning, I guess, I mean, you can mention, it doesn't matter, but um, there's there's been certain videos circulating in the the Twitter sphere, if you will, uh, like negative things that happened on live Twitch streams that people brought to the attention of Twitch. I know I've, (laughs) you had to see the tweets. There yeah, are tons it's of them everywhere. Tag. It's all over. They and, tagged and them and they still did nothing about Twitch it. is tagged. Twitch support is tagged. You can't even respond and saying, we hear your concern. We're looking into it. Yeah. At I mean, least that. At yeah. least do that. Yeah. You I mean, know? Like the, even the, even the, the police in some cases were notified and uh, other like like law officers were actually involved. And it's it's sad to say like they – they were actually looking into the the matter when Twitch was like nowhere to be found in that whole aspect. But I mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly, man. But it's it, such it, life, it, like I, I guess, said, right? it's just like I said, it's just it's just heartbreaking to see that it's just come down to this. You know, it, this should have never happened, but it happened, and now yeah. Mixer's benefiting from it. Yeah, so and, we'll. See. And then I've already I've already said too, like you have Ninja there. If you get two or three more big streamers on like Ninja's level, or honestly, wait, I can't even say that because no one's really on Ninja. Yeah, level. Well, we but know what you mean, like main streams, like the, the you high get, tier like, streamers. If you get like Shroud, uh, Shroud Ooh. over there, or I, I, I'd, I'd want them to grab somebody that's that plays something other than Fortnite. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You need to grab. They need to grab somebody that plays different games so they can bring that crowd that enjoys that those variety games type over. Of, yeah. yep. You need that variety. You can't depend on Fortnite and Apex and PUBG the entire time on your platform. No. You know? But like and not to say not to say that Mixer doesn't have that variety. You just need those channels to come in and bring that variety. 
Yeah. I've met a lot of variety partners on Mixer that grew their following from doing variety and doing different things. So it, it's not like variety content isn't there. You just need the people to actually bring that content to the table. Of course. And it's funny because at like I've done this podcast. I think this is the this will be the sixty the sixty sixth episode of the podcast. I've been doing this for a while. So, I know, right? <laughs> right? Um, but no Execute yeah. Order sixty six. Oh man, I didn't even think about that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Execute order sixty six. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, but Oh sorry, yeah. Star Wars nerd moment. No, no yeah, I know. I got excited for a moment. <laughs> but um it does it's so weird to talk about like Twitch and all these episodes for the most part. And I've never once sat there and you know, like bashed the platform. But as of recently, well, it's kinda like in the spot. I don't think spot. we're like I don't think here we're actually bashing the there's a difference between like bashing oh, the platform yeah. and holding a platform accountable. Yeah, I mean, that's great. Point. You know, like, like, and like I said, I've been saying it the entire time we've been talking. I love Twitch as a platform. Don't that's get me wrong. I. I've had great experiences from Twitch. Yeah, but just need to get the crap together. Just seriously, dropping the ball, yeah. and they need to get their act together. Yeah, that's it. You know, and and I feel like it's good to talk about other platforms and praise other platforms too for doing well. Like D Live brought on PewDiePie, that made them a serious contender too. But nobody really paid attention to it because yeah. D Live happened before all this shit started blowing up on Twitch. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, D Live didn't ride no wave; they just happened. But with Mixer, yeah, they came out of nowhere. They're just like Mixer platforms Mixer, here. Have fun, yeah. PewDiePie. Like, <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, and then people did it for a bit, and then they left. That's what yeah. happened. But Mixer just did this at the right time. Brought on Twitch's biggest streamer at a time where Twitch just kept on messing up. Yeah. That's an eye opener. And that's what makes people interested in Mixer as a platform. Absolutely. So your next step, you have not decided whether you're going to switch. Uh, oh, no, I switched. Switch. No, I mean, like, you're, I, I, you're not sure, like, you're going to be done forever off of Twitch or you're going to oh, switch no. completely yeah, to Mixer keep forever. My account. Yeah, I'm going to keep my account on Twitch. You know, I'm not going to let all that hard go to waste. See, I'm it's excited. There and, and you know, if anything happens where I feel like I want to go back, like, if, 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 like, if my experience on Mixer starts becoming negative, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, not negative – like I'm saying, like with numbers or anything, if it just becomes like a negative experience uh, overall, toxic zone. Yeah, um, I got you. yeah. If it becomes like a toxic wasteland, <laughs> then I'll be like, okay, well, I guess it might be time to go back to Twitch or go back and do something else. Yeah, you oh. know. But right now, Mixer has been filled with so much positivity, so much like it just made me feel welcomed from my first stream, and and. You know, it's just such a great experience to have. Yeah. And it came at the right time. I, 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 you're yeah. absolutely right. So It came at the right time for me, too. And I feel like it came at the right time for a lot of other content creators. Yeah. And because, you know, a lot of, like I, like I was saying earlier, a lot of content creators was just started kind of getting tired of what's been going on with Twitch. But they had, they felt like they had nowhere else to go. Because Twitch is just such that mainstay platform. So so with Ninja opened the door for other streamers to experience other platforms to do what they love. And I respect Ninja for that. Ninja, I feel like, gets a lot of hate. And, and he is the biggest... He's the biggest name and content creation ever in my opinion hands down he's on talk shows he's on he's on posters and walmart target he has his own merch like in national stores yeah that's insane you didn't even see that with pewdiepie or no. any other content creator i, was, I can't even think of really any other content creator at that level you know so with Ninja making these moves and stuff like that, it 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 it's 
you have the number one content creator in America move to a different platform. Even the world for That's, the most part. I mean, dude, he's well yeah. known everywhere. I the guy can't go anywhere anymore without anyone like pointing him out. Yeah, you know, and I'm not saying it's going to last forever for him or anything like that. But right now, at the moment, you know, he's done a lot for the entertainment and streaming industry. And I thank him for that. Uh, And I'm grateful to him for that. You know, and I feel like, you know, other people, like I said, he gets a little too much hate. But I feel like he's done things professionally since he's gotten his name out there and he's done his he's done things well enough for me to respect that. I mean, he's he's kept his head down. He stayed out of drama. I mean, that's what you yeah. want from someone of his caliber. Yeah, so I mean, even, even with Twitch. the whole situation with Twitch, where um, he was the only streamer where they had that splash page saying, hey, sorry, your streamer is in another castle. And they didn't show his panels or anything, and they showed other channels. He didn't even say anything initially. The only time he spoke up is when porn was featured on yeah. his channel. Yeah. And he said, and that's what he said. That's what he said in this video. He's like, I kept my head down. I, I didn't want to say anything. I tried to make this transition as smooth as possible. But he, then he was just like, it's unacceptable. And, and he apologized before Twitch apologized. He apologized for having porn featured on his channel. And it wasn't even his fault. Yeah, That's taking the high road, man. Absolutely. And that's, you know. I mean, and that's 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 marketing 101 and that's, you know, making yourself look better anyway. That's just the the trick of the trade, you know, but still it was good of him to do that. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just truly excited to see. I honestly it. think he lawyered up, to be honest. <laughs> no, yeah, I wouldn't doubt that at all. That's defamation of character. I mean, if you have kids going over. I mean, he has kids going over to his channel every day all the time, you know, and having that on there, dude, that's, that's, that's low though. I mean, for them to do, I not even like quote unquote, see it. So like how to, you you know what I'm saying? Like it just, I mean, whatever. But they never did that for like any other content creator, you know, that that left the platform. That's what I'm saying. Like it's, it's. Like PewDiePie. It is unacceptable. It's unreal. PewDiePie is on PewDiePie is on uh Twitch. And he's partnered. So and he's partnered. So and they didn't they don't feature any other channels on his his profile. Yeah, and they I, never did. But he exclusively streams on D Live. So why didn't they take his partnership away? Yeah, I don't know. And I, why didn't they feature other I mean, accounts on his? You did see the article that um, the CEO was like livid that um, Ninja made the switch to Mixer. No, right? I didn't. But oh I'm man, sure yeah, they were upset. If you, that, if that you was look their, back, yeah. like he was actually they quoted to say that he was like outraged by this move. So I mean, I mean but you, what are you gonna do? I mean, oh, I mean. It's, I, I understand completely, and I'm just saying that, like, for for the CEO to make a statement or even get quoted saying that he was lived by uh, content creators switching platforms mm-hmm. is it, a bit ridiculous, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, how much revenue were they bringing in? You know, they were bringing in a lot of revenue. Yeah. And they lost a huge chunk of it, and now Mixer has that chunk. But, I mean, it's... Wouldn't it be their fault for for losing their number one content creator? That goes to show that you know yeah. their platform I'm isn't as good sure, as they think it is. I'm pretty sure Ninja tried to work some. I mean, he's a businessman. Oh, of course, I'm, I'm sure he tried to tried to negotiate something behind the scenes. You know. Yeah. But Microsoft had to make him an offer that he just couldn't refuse. Oh, yeah. yeah. At that point. Absolutely, but this because as Ninja, I mean, you have to be like, okay, all right, Mixer, you want me to go to your platform, but you only bring in, you probably only bring in like ten percent of viewership compared to Twitch at the moment. Yeah. So it's kind of like, what are you going to do to to compensate me for coming over? Free subs for the first month and a ton of money. Exactly. Exactly. 
it just it, I'm excited though. I mean, with this whole this whole change in platform and and bringing light to to this like it's not new, but like a platform that may be new to people because they've yeah, never really given thought. It's not a new thought. platform. It's a young platform. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's it is basically a new platform. Some some websites take months to blow up. Some websites take years to blow up. So you just never know. Like, how long was, because I brought up the Facebook's MySpace situation earlier. How long was Facebook around before they overtook MySpace? I think it was a good two or three years. I don't know. I think know. it was a good two remember. or three years. It's been years. a while. Let me see. Let me I was see. that person that fought, like, against getting Facebook for the longest time. So I couldn't tell you an accurate time. So Facebook was created in 2004. Yeah, I got So let's say when did MySpace <laughs> crumble? <laughs> when did MySpace crumble? It never So MySpace started. actually started a year before MySpace actually started a year before Facebook did. Yeah. So MySpace started in two thousand three and Facebook started in two thousand four. Yeah, but when did the majority of people leave Facebook to go to uh, leave MySpace to go to, to go to Facebook? I can't even speak In right 2010. Now. Well, I'll talk about what you said 2004, right? Six years for its demise? Yeah. So my, 2010 is when MySpace pretty much. They started going downhill in 2009. Oh. 2009 okay. is when they started cool. going downhill. And in 2010, so it took Facebook five years. It took Facebook five years to overtake MySpace, pretty much. So, what what are your predictions about, you know, Mixer? You think that it's going to overtake Twitch? I think Mixer needs some a couple more big names. If they can get, if they can get like Dr. Lupo there, if they can get Tim the Tatman, if they can get Tim the Tatman, Tim the Tatman will leave Twitch. Oh, honestly, with the right price, I'm sure they can get him to switch. With the right price, maybe, but Twi- Tim the Tatman is so community focused. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't think he's willing. I don't think he's willing to make this big of a move to lose a lot of people in his community. Yeah, but then again, look at look at the amount of people that follow Ninja over. I never thought. Yeah, but that- Ninja. Ninja yeah. isn't as community focused as Tim the Tatman. That's very very true. Like Tim the Tap Man actually talks to his chat as as well as he can. I mean, it's always lit in there if you ever go into his chat. Oh yeah, absolutely. And he still so, takes the time but, out to kind of read some of the yeah some of the uh, like chat and what it, it just yeah he he takes his time and and like I said he's a community streamer and I feel like anybody who's a community focused streamer needs to watch Tim the Tap Man and needs to learn from him because he is the best community focused streamer out there. He he's my favorite streamer out there. I'll be a 100% yeah. honest because it just I love the, him. I he's love the guy. Hilarious. Dude, so he funny. He made a video, he made a video 5 years ago called Tips for Starting to Stream. Like tips for a starting streamer. And it's the one video I think I go back to all the time to watch. Because it is one of the first videos I watched before I started streaming. What is it? And what does it encompass? It just everything that people talk about now. You know, be yourself. So you're be saying he's like the guru yeah. of uh He it's the only video he's yes. ever made about it. You know, it's not like he made a million YouTube videos telling you how to grow your channel. Yeah. Or something like that. All he said, he says there, he, he he says in the video, he's like, this is things that I've done. It may not work for you, but everything he talked about was common sense. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's the common sense now. Like, it's like, you know, don't look at your viewer count, have fun, keep talking, interact and engage with your community as much as possible. All these things that helped him, you know, succeed on Twitch. Yeah. And he still hasn't lost that. He's still the same person he's always been. And that's why people love Tim the Tap. Absolutely. You know, but you Ninja, like like I said, with Ninja and Shroud and these other streamers, they're more of competitive guys. Yeah, you know? I, I never go into Ninja or Shroud's uh, chat to 
talk to them because I know it's not going to happen. No, I'll, I'll, I like watching Shroud because he's chill. Yeah. He's not really like an over the top guy. And he's just phenomenal to watch. Yeah. Like if you watch him play any shooter, Dude, oh my you're just goodness. Really like, I used to watch him in the PUBG era. Yeah. My God. The one time I just watched him, he used uh, just a pistol. Like in a match. He would use the pistol in the bolt action. That's all he would use half yeah. the time. And, and it he, blows like, me away how good, yeah, how good he was. He just peered around this corner a few times, shot this one guy, killed him. He's like, oh, here comes his buddy. Does the same thing to his buddy. And then another like another team tries a third party. And he just he just drops him with the pistol. Like, how? I'm so bad with the pistol in PUBG when it first came. I'm so <laughs> bad. But he was just uh, amazing. Yeah. He still is, man. He still has it, you know, and he's just such a I think I like him because he's chill. Like I'm more of a chill streamer. I'll be hype when I need to, you know, but I'm more of a chill guy. And and that that's why I kind of look up the shroud. I mean, I don't have the game. I don't have the the gameplay level that he does, but I have like the same just chill nonchalant attitude that he does you know what i mean yeah. and i love that about shroud and and he does his best to read the chat and interact with the chat too you know yeah but but like ninja like i said ninja's huge ninja's huge and i don't feel like people so i don't want this to come out the wrong way because i did just praise ninja <laughs> but i don't want people to look at ninja and be like because Ninja used to be a lot different than he is now. He used to be very interactive and yeah. stuff like that with his chat. I don't know. I haven't watched a Mixer stream with him yet. I haven't watched him on Mixer yet because I've been so busy. Uh, I just started working and I'm like always working. And every time he's on, I can't catch him. Yeah. I and, haven't seen um, him either, so. But on Twitch, he used to never really interact with his chat. So I feel like people look at Ninja and they're like, okay, all I got to do is sit down and play whatever and people will come into my channel. But it's like, you didn't, you didn't see what Ninja did to get to where he's at. <laughs> you know, like he did a lot of social media yep. and he did a, and like, he's been around since the very beginning. Just he's been TV. around since Justin TV. Yeah. He's been yeah. on the Twitch platform for seven, eight years. Like hard work and dedication he, is where he got oh, how he got yeah. where he got. So hard work and dedication. And he's a good competitive player. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. But so I feel like the move to mixer though, will be good in the long run. I just, I'm excited to see what this whole transition to mixer for a big streamer is going to bring to stream platforms. That's what yeah. I'm excited about. I'm hoping that at some point in time, one other big streamer, makes the switch from Twitch Twitch oh my goodness Twitch <laughs> to Mixer and then we have ourselves a ball game because I I mean it's it's going to be really interesting to see what happens next because I, I can't imagine Twitch wanting to hold out or hold people accountable for misconduct if they're like one ban away from losing another another big streamer yeah so exactly I feel like they need to simplify their code of conduct and their t terms of service, and they need to make it like here's what will happen if you do this, this, and this, like clear cut. Yep. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't we'll matter who it is, because if people clip it, if people clip it, and it's in that terms of service, they need to take action. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you look at if you look at Mixer's terms of service, it's clear cut. Like they had the whole drama with the dress code for Mixer. And people don't get like for like the family friendly, you know, you need to be like fully clothed, you know, and and teen, it was like a little bit more convenient, but 18 plus, you know, you could kind of pretty much wear what you want. And people were looking at the family friendly and teen dress code and like nitpicking that when they never even streamed on the platform. Yeah, well, I mean, and all the females from Mixer, they were like, we don't mind it. You know, we don't mind it. We like that it's clear cut and simplified. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but it, as long as it works for that specific platform and they yeah. abide by those rules, that's what I care about. So if they have a clear cut thing and say, if you wear this, doesn't matter gender at all, you're banned. Yeah. And I'm exactly. fine with that. I'm okay with them. I'm okay with them 
setting those guidelines and actually abiding by those rules. So, yeah, and and it has, like I said, it has clear cut terms of service that will hold them accountable. So if this happens, like people can just be like, look, it says right here in your terms of service that this isn't allowed. So what are you going to do about it? They will have no choice but to be like, oh, shit, you're right. Let me let's let's fix that. Yeah. You well, know, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I, I feel like, like I said, like I said earlier, Twitch just needs to work on their moderation and their terms of service and actually doing what they need to do to make sure the community is happy. Yeah. And once Twitch starts actually following their own t- uh, terms of service, I think that their platform will be much better off. And I think that a lot more people might follow. Well, I think they might find their way back to Twitch and really fall oh, in love with yeah. the platform. And thanks for listening to this episode of the Ragging Podcast. Be sure to rate, subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, or anywhere else you listen to podcasts. I release a new episode every Wednesday. And as always, stay red, comrades.